genius show. It's the alley the Indian and the Eskimo. It's the alley the Indian and the Eskimo. Hello and welcome to Heartbeat Alaska Native News and Native Information. I'm Jeannie Green. Thank you so very much. If you're a first-time viewer, Heartbeat Alaska is native news from a native perspective. We travel to remote villages across the north and mirror the lives of the people that live in those villages. Before we start today's program, I'd like to welcome some new sponsors. Thank you so much. Coopit Carlisle Transportation Services, owned by Harry McDonald, a good friend of mine from Seward, Alaska. Coopit Carlisle Transportation Services is Alaska-owned and managed. They have over 400 people working for them and they are either the biggest transportation services in the state or one of them and we're very proud of you Harry McDonald and we thank you for making Heartbeat Alaska possible. On today's program we travel to beautiful Yakutat, Alaska and when I mean beautiful I mean beautiful hearts. My mother was telling me that when she was a young girl going to school in Wrangell, Alaska, she didn't have a prom dress. And one girl from Yakutat, Alaska lent her one. And it wasn't just a regular dress. It was the most beautiful dress. And that reflects the heart and soul of the people in Yakutat. You're going to love the show. We're going to meet bears. We're going to see some of the world's biggest glaciers. A lot more than that coming up on today's program. Heartbeat Alaska is pleased to announce a brand new official hotel. We're brought to you now by Millennium Alaskan Hotel, the official hotel of Heartbeat Alaska. And Heartbeat Alaska is also brought to you by Frontier Flying Service. Thank you, Frontier, for getting Heartbeat Alaska airborne. Heartbeat Alaska is brought to you in part by Brown's Electric Lighting Gallery. Thank you, Brown's Electric, for your generous support of Heartbeat Alaska. We've been covering businesses, families, and individuals since before Alaska was a state. And we'll keep doing it until the glaciers melt on Mount McKinley. Primera Blue Cross Blue Shield of Alaska. We're here. We're with you. Heartbeat Alaska is made possible by Kupik Carlisle Transportation, your full-service transportation and logistics company. Did you know that Yakutat, Alaska is the smallest community in America that is served by a major airline? Also, did you know that it is the northernmost Clinkett village in Alaska? Yakutat, Alaska has many fascinating facts associated with it. Let's learn all about it, okay? Travel with me now to beautiful Yakutat, Alaska. Located at the mouth of Yakutat Bay, Yakutat is isolated, staring out at the Gulf of Alaska. Its nearest neighbor is over 150 air miles away. Yakutat means the place where the canoes rest. It has a rich and diverse cultural history. The original settlers are believed to be Eyak-speaking people from the Copper River area. In the early 1900s, as Western culture and influence spread throughout Alaska, many of the traditional ways were restricted or banned outright. But in 1955, the elders of Yakutat moved to restore their dancing and potlatches and their language. 
It was just fortunate that in this area they started that early because they sat down and had a meeting there in the A&B Hall and they said it is enough that the missionaries came and told us that we could not dance and we could not do our potlatches. And then the Bureau of Indian Affairs said we could not speak our language. And so the uh, men got together in the days of old timers and they said, well, we want to teach our younger people before we leave. And uh, this is what they did. They took all the younger people down there and they'd sit down there and teach them the song. Meet Lydia Henry. Lydia is part of the Mount St. Elias dancers. Lydia and her younger sister are the last of the Thunderbirds in Yakutat. The last of the Thunderbirds? That sounds impressive, but what does it mean? And here's an octopus bag I started working on, haven't yet finished it. In the Tlingit culture, there are two moieties, eagle and raven. Every Tlingit is one or the other. Within those moieties, there are clans like Koho, Beaver, and in Lydia's case, Thunderbird. Moieties and clans are passed down along the mother's side of the family. That's matriarchal. Lydia's mom, Arlene, is a Thunderbird. And if Lydia has children, they will be in the Thunderbird clan as well. If neither Lydia or her younger sister have kids, there will be no more Thunderbirds in Yakutat. So you might be wondering if Lydia is planning to have children. Well, so is just about everyone else in Yakutat. That's what a lot of people ask about at Fat Watches. And I was about seven when they first said that. They would, my mom would get up and say, you know, we're Thunderbirds and stuff, and I was the only daughter at the time, so they asked me if I was going to carry it on and have a whole bunch of kids. <laughs> it's, okay, crazy. so you're seven years old. What did you say? No. <laughs> I wasn't thinking about kids. I was still a kid yet. Lydia plans to go into the military and maybe become a lawyer. She also plans to come back here because it's my home and I still love it no matter what goes on. And hopefully everybody that planned to get good jobs when they're older will come back and make this an awesome community. My son is Shane here started out first. Lloyd Brown and his sons are also in the dance group. At a young age. And then my other son, Tim, started out. My son, David, started out. And then they got the box drums. And they needed somebody to uh, work the box drums. And I got involved by, you know, beating on the box drums. As a young child, I used to go to the A&B Hall there and uh, with my grandmother. I was raised by my grandmother. Mm -hmm. And I used to go down there w with her and used to watch them and pretty soon eventually got involved with it. And uh, that kind of faded out and they're just more, you know, more recently starting starting to bring it back, back in. In the brown home, clinket culture is all around. This piece up here is... Uh, Tana, it's not really from here. It's uh, something that I bought from the store, but it represents the type of uh, stuff that we had here before. It was uh, the ways of money, you know? And they had various different sizes and stuff like that. And uh, the big, bigger ones had more value. The smaller ones, you know, had different value and stuff like that. Here's one that I, I am working on. Started to carve it. And it's a long ways from being finished yet. David Boxley 
who came up here and he started uh, showing us how to carve these. We just haven't really finished mine. Here's uh, my son Shane's here. Well, uh, when we first got these, these were, this is made of alder, alder wood, and they were just big blocks that looked like a little tree. I mean, like a little house and almost like a triangle. And then we took and then we did all this here stuff and marked them out and started carving them. And uh, I'm still in the process of, you know, getting, getting mine smoothed out. I've got to take and get the... This is what it looked like bef when we first got it. And then all that is transformed into this. There is a drum that we've used quite a bit. That has the eagle and the raven. And the round face in there signifies a human. Well, I, I bought that drum, and uh, it was unpainted. And I had one of my relatives uh, painted that. A guy by the name of Fred Bemis had penciled it in. And uh, Myron Johnson painted it. Yeah, that, that drum was used today. That drum was used today out there at the dance. I, I don't use it myself, but my sons use it. You know, I mean, there's there's a lot of pride. You know, I mean, there's sometimes I stand back and when, when I wasn't dancing or involved with them, but you know, just more or less, you know, going to the practice with them, making sure they got to the practice, and I and I was wishing that you know back when I was a child that I continued on, and then to see my kids get involved in it, you know, it just brings back good memories and a lot of strong pride. My name is George Ramos. I'm from the Yakutat, as you can see, and I'd like to say hello to all the men that was with me in Company B, Sitka, Alaska, and the heart beat Alaska will be right back. Thank you very much. If you visit Barrow in the summertime, it can be hard to sleep with that 24-hour sunshine. So, the King Eider, Barrow's newest hotel, does everything to make your stay quiet, relaxing, and worry-free. Don't worry about a cab. The King Eider is a short walk from the airport. Need to get around town? No problem. The King Eider rents cars. Want a room with a kitchenette? The King Eider's got them. Smoke-free, alcohol-free. It's the hotel so clean, they ask you to take your shoes off when you come in the door. The King Eider Inn, Barrow, Alaska. Each week, Heartbeat Alaska brings you great stories from all over the state. And we couldn't do it without the generous support of Frontier Flying Service. Frontier gets our camera crews where they need to go. So whenever you see a Frontier plane, give them a wave. Say hi from Nooksack. You might just be on Heartbeat Alaska. Frontier Flying Service, covering Alaska for over 50 years. I was 39 when I got drug cancer from a smoking cigarette. I almost died. Now there is a permanent hole in my throat. Nothing will ever be the same again. Not even the simple thing. Isn't Yakutat wonderful? Just surrounded by all this wonderful, beautiful water, by bears, by glaciers, by... Speaking of ice, how about this ice? This is Dave Beatty. What are you fishing for in there? A little bit. Something to add to the water. soda. He's lived in Yakutat all his life. Today, he and some friends are out with this character. Here, let me turn on this high-tech equipment. 
And it takes several of these machines to get all this down, too. Jeez, here you go. <laughs> it's like Star Trek. Five two, St. Elias, Channel one six, please seven five two. Mark Sapington is the owner of the Yakutak Charter Boat Company. Normally, he'd be guiding sport fishermen, or sporties as the locals call them, but today he's relaxing with friends. <laughs> They're heading up to the largest tidewater glacier in North America, the Hubbard Glacier. On the way, the fog that is so common around Yakutat slides in. Bunch of ice here in front of us again. What's the, uh, the technique for getting through ice like this? Go slow. <laughs> Go slow and avoid the big ones. happens. We're about to come to a stop. Hang on there. <laughs> well, that was a big one. Though. Yeah, I'm glad we're not in a fiberglass boat. And I've really got to pay attention to any ice that I might find coming under the boat. As long as I go slow, it tends to slip out and I, and I don't damage the prop. I go through that kind of thick stuff when it's and, and go through too fast, but think the property bad. Mark has to slowly weave his way through an ethereal world of ice and crystal clear water. The group begins to wonder if they'll be able to see the glacier at all. Oh, it's just right in front of us. It's just so we can't see it yet. And it's a huge wall of ice. It's a spectacular. Through the fog, Dave Beatty points out an old village site. Yeah, right back in there. I thought it was the next one. That's I was a little kid when my grandfather told me about it. Fog lingers, and Mark continues to feel his way toward the glacier. And this island behind me is locally known as, as Egg Island or Hanky Island. In the springtime, all the seabirds around here do their thing, lay their eggs. Then, just as they round the corner of Egg Island, the sun cuts through the fog, blue sky meets blue ice and the Hubbard Glacier stretches as far as the eye can see. Mark cuts the engines to hear the rolling thunder of school bus-sized chunks of ice crashing into the sea.
While drifting in a boat is the best way to hear the glacier, the best way to understand its size is from the air. Yakutat Coastal Airlines regularly flies folks over the glacier. Notice how the glacier dwarfs the small plane below. From up here, it's easy to see how the glacier's advance will soon choke off the mouth of Russell Fjord. The fjord is 40 miles long, and experts predict by the middle of this summer, the fjord will be a lake. The same thing happened in 1986 and again in 2002. The trees you can see by the shore were killed the last time water backed up behind the glacier. Residents here worried that the floodwaters could rise again this year. While this town isn't in direct danger, floodwaters could change the course of Sitak River, considered one of the best steelhead rivers in the world. The sport fishermen who come here support the local economy. Back at the glacier, Dave Beatty has his sights on some traditional food. He likes to bring home seals to share with the elders in Yakutat. The seal ducks in and out between the icebergs as Dave waits for the right shot. I like to be about half the distance, but they know when you have the rifle up. See, so he's just kind of peeking behind the glacier or the ice over there. Yeah, they, they know when they're being hunted. There was three or four of them over here until we brought the rifle out. Let's see if you can see them just kind of peeking over and watching. Well, I guess it's Seals 1, Dave Beatty 0 for today. It's springtime in Yakutat and the king salmon will be running soon. This is Chicago Harbor. That little cove back in there is Little Chicago. That's where one of the better places for king troll. On the way back to the village, the crew decides to try their luck at trolling. Dave Beatty just watches. That for me, this is the most boring way to fish. <laughs> There's a few people that love doing this, but I don't have the patience for it. What's, what's your usual technique? Setting a net from the beach and whirling it out and then coming back in about eight hours and checking it. <laughs> That's the proper way to fish right there. He set his net. He went back to town. He's watching TV and he'll come back tomorrow and have a salmon. With no king salmon in the boat, no seals, and daylight slipping away, Mark heads the boat back toward Yakutat. Then, up ahead, they see something in the water. The bear swam all the way from this island to here, about a quarter of a mile in the frigid water. In a day of fog and ice, thundering glaciers and elusive seals, as evening falls, a boat full of memories heads home. Heartbeat Alaska to Yuwakshik Ekwiti. My name is Fred White from Yakutat. Heartbeat Alaska will be right back.
Nowhere else in the world can boast the beauty and splendor of Southeast Alaska. Towering glaciers, abundant wildlife, magnificent scenery that will make you feel like you've stepped into a postcard. And nestled in the middle of it all is the Glacier Bear Lodge. On your next visit to Yakutat, make your stay one that you will remember for a lifetime. The Glacier Bear Lodge, fine dining, beautifully appointed rooms, and a true Alaskan atmosphere that will make you feel right at home. Alaska Native owned and operated. Make your reservation today. The Glacier Bear Lodge in Yakutat. I can listen. I can cook. Good. I can coach. Kids with something to do are less likely to do drugs. I can drive. I can paint. I can dance. A little of your time can make a lifetime of difference. I can read. I can help. You can help. Call toll-free 1-877-KIDS-313 to find out about community drug prevention programs. I can keep a kid off drugs. Alaskan Heritage Legendary Smoked Salmon, freshly caught in the icy waters of Southeast Alaska, then sweet brined and alder smoked for a truly mouthwatering flavor. We feature gourmet smoked salmon, cold smoked salmon locks, and the original Alaska bits. Or try our award-winning potlatch brand salmon strips, tender cut salmon slow dried in a warm blanket of alder smoke. Naturally low in fat and high in omega-3 oils, Alaskan Heritage Smoked Salmon, available exclusively from Cake Foods. Call 800-524-2487. Come, Soar Like an Eagle. By popular demand, Spirit Days is back. Spirit Days 2003, held June 21st and 22nd at Service High School in Anchorage. This event is free and open to the public. Come, soar like an eagle and share the power of song. Thank you, everyone from Yakutat, Alaska, for helping make this program possible. And thank you for the good citizens there that are sending me fish, that are sending me dried seaweed, that are sending me dry fish, king salmon. Thank you very much. That's one of the blessings of being the hostess of Heartbeat Alaska. I get to sample the good native food from the areas around there. And thank you so much for joining us. I hope that this was food for your soul today, and I hope that you enjoyed the program to the max. We'd love to hear from you. Call me at 907-563-7440. And visit my website, JeannieGreen.com. You can email me at JeannieGreen at AK.net. Until next week, God bless every single one of you, and we'll see you then. Kids 313 to find out about community drug prevention programs. I can keep a kid off drugs. Alaskan Heritage Legendary Smoked Salmon, freshly caught in the icy waters of Southeast Alaska, then sweet brined and alder smoked for a truly mouthwatering flavor. We feature gourmet smoked salmon, cold smoked salmon locks, and the original Alaska bits. Or try our award winning potlatch brand salmon strips, tender cut salmon slow dried in a warm blanket of alder smoke. Naturally low in fat and high in omega-3 oils, Alaskan Heritage Smoked Salmon, available exclusively from Cake Foods. Call 800-524-2487. Come, soar like an...